26, using the bond energies in table 7.2, determine the approximate enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have this big reaction over here. Ooh, okay. So we have two ethanes, C2H6 gas plus O2 gas, seven of them, plus four carbon dioxide, CO2 gas, plus six water vapors, H2O. And because of this, we want to find the approximate, so not the exact, enthalpy change. Now remember, anything in chem, physics, calculus, pre-calc, a change is always that little triangle sign, right? So that's a delta, and we want to find the enthalpy change, so this is delta H. H for enthalpy, H goes with H. And just know that a delta H is the amount of energy that is released or absorbed in heat. So H is all around. This is talking about heat energy. So either uh, heat that's being produced, um, whether it's being absorbed or released into the surroundings. Let's figure out how much heat is, you know, being worked out here. Now they did say that we have to use the bond energies, right? Bonds are coming from the actual bonds in between these uh, compounds here, right? Whether it's a single bond, double bond, or a triple bond. But the thing is, I'm looking and uh, where are those bonds, right? I can't see them. They're in this compound, but I can't visually see them. Um, you know, they didn't write out what bonds. So beginning out, my suggestion to you is if they want you to use the bond energies, just take a, a second and write out the Lewis structures. As you get more, um, you know, more practice with these types of questions, you can kind of visualize what type of um, compound and what type of bonds are in those compounds. But just starting out, take a few seconds, write out the Lewis structure. Now we have tons of videos just uh, teaching you how to draw the Lewis structures. So I'll be there every step of the way for you guys if you want to go back and find uh, those videos on the channel. We go step by step, we take it slow, and we draw out Lewis structures. This will kind of be like a quick inversion. So let's see if your answers match mine. You can pause the video if you want, try to draw it out and see if you get what I get. All right, so let's go. So C2H6, I'm not gonna worry about how many I have. I just wanna draw out the compound. Now, hydrogens are never in the middle. So I know that I have to have two carbons next to each other. And I'm just gonna split this up evenly, right? Six total hydrogens, probably three hydrogens for each carbon. So I'm just gonna draw that out, H, one, two hydrogens, three hydrogens, four, five, and six. Hydrogens can only have single bonds, so single it up. And because the carbon has three bonds or six electrons, it could only make one more bond to bridge the gap. So I have that plus O2. Let's try to draw out O2. O2 is two oxygens and you would need a double bond to get the octet. So with the double bond, you'll have four electrons around each oxygen. Then we have to get CO2. So CO2, carbons in the middle, surrounded by two oxygens. And in order to get each one to be the octet, uh, we'll see double bonds on both sides. So double bonded up, double bond, four electrons or two pairs for each oxygen and carbon dioxide is good and then we have the last but not least water in this case oxygen is in the middle surrounded by the two hydrogens hydrogen can only have one bond so single it up and then you get the four for the oxygen okay not too shabby and uh just keep in mind that uh, nobody cares what states you're at. For this, nobody cares. Could have been all solid, liquid, gas, whatever. The bonds are the bonds regardless of what uh, your compound is uh, because these are physical changes if you're changing your state. So it doesn't really matter, you know, what state you're at. Who cares? <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, looking at the differences, right? Because basically what we're going to take note is what bonds were broken. Bonds that break are always on the left side or the reactant side. And bonds that form are always on the product side. So we just have to see the differences between each side. So just take it one step at a time. 
So I see that I have a CC bond, CC single bond here, and I say, do I have that CC single bond on the product side? No, I don't. So I am going to say, okay, I'm going to tally that up. Oop, not in blue and red, right? So I have a CC single bond and I already went to the back of a textbook to find out all the bond energies that we need for this question. BE stands for bond energy. So CC single is 345. And for each one of these, I only have one, so we're good. Let's go to the next one. Now I see another bond here, right? This would be a CH bond. Okay, well, do we see any CH bonds on the product side? Not that I see, right? You guys getting it? So I have to write that down. Whether I write it down CH or HC, it does not matter. The, the, the only thing that matters is that it's a single and the two elements are there. So a CH bond is 415. But now I say to myself, well, wait a minute. I have one CH bond. I have two CH bonds. I have three CH bonds. I have four CH bonds, five CH bonds, and six of them. And all of these are nowhere to be found on the product side. So they are, were all broken. So I have to take that 415, and what do you think I got to do with it? You're absolutely correct. We have to times it by six because all six of these are gone. So we're going to take the 415, times it by six, to get that total number of, let's just equal this out, and we get 2,000, whoa, 490 kilojoules per mole. All right, well, now let's just sum up the total amount of heat energy for this one molecule. We have the 345 and the 2,490. How are we going to sum up these two values? Yeah, we got to add them. So I'll just take that 2,490 plus 345, and now the total would be 2,835 kilojoules per mole for this one compound. Let's keep going. The next thing that I see is that I have an O double bond O. So I say to myself, okay, is this on this side? It specifically has to be oxygen bound to oxygen. And mm -mm, I have oxygen to carbon, carbon to oxygen, right? Not the same. So I'm going to just write that out. That one was broken. So 498. There's only one here. So I only got to write one down. Moving on to the products. Now we go in the reverse direction. We say, okay, are the bonds here? on the left side. If they're not, these were the ones that were formed. So I have an O double bonded with C. Do I see that bond on the left side? Nah, not that I see. So I got to write it down. Whether you write it as OC or CO, this is kind of just like a preference. It doesn't really matter. We'll say C double bond O. I went and got that number for you, 741. But always make sure that you have the total amount. I have an OC, which is the same thing as a carbon double bond oxygen. So technically I have two of these. So I have to take this number and do what with them? Yeah, we got times it by two. You're getting it. So 741 times two, we get a total for this molecule of 1,482 kilojoules per mole. Last but not least, let's look at the H2O. I see a HO bond or an OH bond. Is that bond on the left-hand side? Uh-uh, I don't see it. So this bond was formed. HO or OH, doesn't matter. And I got that number 464. Just make sure that you have the right amount, but I have one and then I have another one. So we know by now, we take the 464 and we times it by two. There you go. So two times 464, I get, maybe I'll put it up here. 
I get 928. Okay. Now, these are all of the numbers that corresponds with one of these. 1O2, 1CO2, 1H2O. But the thing is, is that if we go back to the balanced equation, uh-oh, we have two of these. We got seven O2s, we got four CO2s, and six H2Os. Now you can, you know, if you wanted to write out all of your Lewis structures, technically you would have had to draw out seven O double bonded O's, right? You had to draw four CO2s or six H2Os. That's just going to take too much time. So let's just write these numbers out. We got two total of these. We have seven total, four and six. So what do you think we're going to do with our total um, value, the enthalpy value that we found out for each molecule? And now since we know that we have two and seven and four and six, we have to take these numbers and times them by, that's right, we gotta times them by how many we have. So I'm going to take the two, um, let's see, okay, I'll just, I'll pull this out a little bit. So I'm gonna say two, two, <laughs> and times it by that. We have to take the seven and times it by 498. We have to take the four and times it by the 1,482, and we have to take the six, and let me see if I could pull this out. Oh boy, this one's gonna be, oh nice. We got times it by six. So let's just write out these values now. So we have two times two, eight, three, five. So I get 5,670. Seven times 498. I get 3,486. Four times 1482. I get, let's change color, 5,928. And then we got six times, nine, two, eight. Whoa, geez, 5,568, okay. But now, seems like it's the end of the road, right? What are we gonna do with these numbers? There has to be some type of formula that we could plug it in, and you're absolutely correct. The formula is this. Your sum of your delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn is the reaction, equals two. The sum, that's this little s symbol, right? It's the sum, which just means to add. Add up all of your bond energies for the bonds broken side. That's the reactant side. So bonds broken is always reactant, minus the sum of all your bond energies of the bonds that are formed. And that's always going to be your product side. So in this case, maybe what I can do is I can just you know, bring this down a little bit because I had 5,670 and 3,486. Well, it's literally this plus this on the balanced equation. So I have to take that 5,670 and add it with the 3,486 to get a grand total of can we go fishing for the numbers? Yes, we can. 5,670 plus this guy, 3,486. And for my reactant side, I get a grand total of 9,156 kilojoules per mole. So I'll just maybe box that off. And then we have to sum up the product side. It would be 5,928 plus 5,568. So we have to add those two together. Let's go fishing. 5928 plus 5568. Five, I love the TI. And we get 1,000, no, 11,496 kilojoules per mole. Now, since we found out the totals for both sides, that's the summing up part. Let's now just plug it in. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals bonds broken, which is 9,156 minus the 11,496. 
Okay. Let's plug it in. Delta H, approximately, for the whole entire reaction is this number minus this number. And there we go. Negative 2,000. Jeez, 340 kilojoules per mole. I mean, that's a lot of heat. But that's why when we take a step back and we look at this, when we, when we identified what types of uh, balanced equations we have, that's a combustion reaction. They're always going to be exothermic. They always produce fire. <laughs> um, does anybody remember that YouTube video? Oh my God, back in the day. Back in the day, day early, early uh, YouTube. Uh, some, something about muffins. And it was like, you know, showing all different types of muffins. And fire. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments. <laughs> That was my YouTube experience growing up. We had videos like that. <laughs> but anyway, um, what'd you think? I hope this helped you out. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much, and I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you in later lessons. Okie dokie. Bye-bye.